I think we may be able to implant a neural link in less than a year in a person, I think. Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So Elon Musk just did his second appearance on the Joe Rogan Experience. There weren't any major dramas this time, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your viewpoint. But Elon did share some amazingly interesting details about Neuralink, among other things. So in this video, I'm going to play a few clips and add a little bit of commentary where I think it's relevant. Without further ado, let's dive in. Hey guys, Webull have extended their offer for US residents. If you'd like to help out the channel and get up to two free stocks, use the link in the description. All right, let's get back to it. It can interface basically anywhere, anywhere in your brain. Um, so it could be something that uh, you know helps cure, say, uh, eyesight, like give you returns your eyesight, even if you've like lost your optic nerve type of thing. Uh, could really? Give, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hearing, obviously. Um, I mean, pretty much anything that we're that, that it, it could, in principle, fix almost anything that is wrong with the brain. Um, and it, it could, it could um, restore uh, limb functionality. So if you've got to uh, interface into the motor cortex and then an implant that's, say, uh, that's like a microcontroller uh, in, in your muscle groups, uh, you, you could then create a sort of a neural shunt that restores somebody who is a quadriplegic to full functionality. Like they can walk around, be normal. Whoa. Joe's face summed it up completely there. Of course, for those of you that do have a broad understanding of neuroscience, modern medicine, and how the two are intersecting, you're not going to be surprised to hear any of this stuff. But for everybody else, expect your mind to be blown repeatedly as we go through more of these clips. Neuralink has the potential to probably do more good in terms of ending suffering for people than just about anything else that I can think of. And I'm, uh, this is not an exaggeration. When you, when you actually look at the implications of what this technology will be able to do, in its full form, when it's fully iterated, it is truly mind-blowing. Oh, this just so much good that is going to come from this technology. I think more people should be talking about it and aware of what's coming. It's a generalized um, sort of uh, thing for for fixing any kind of brain injury in, in, in principle. Like, if you, or if you've got like like severe epilepsy or something like that, it could it could just it could just sort of stop the epilepsy from occurring. Like, it could detect it in real time and then fire a, a counter pulse and stop the epilepsy. Um, if um, I mean, there's there's a whole range of brain injuries. Like people, somebody gets a stroke, they could lose the ability to speak. Uh, the, that that also that could also be fixed. So if you've got like stroke damage, or if you, you lose, say, you know, muscle control over part of your face or something like that. I think, it, and then when when you, when you get old, you tend to, um, if you get like, you know, uh, Alzheimer's or something like that, then you lose memory, and th this could help you with you know, restoring your memory, that kind of thing. Restoring memory. And what what is happening that's allowing it to do that? Like the wires, these, these small wires, yeah. are stimulating these areas of the brain. And then is it that the areas of the brain are, they're, they're losing some sort of electrical force? Like what what is happening? Yeah. Yeah? So it's, it's, it's like, it's like the thing of it's like a bunch of circuits and there's some like circuits that are broken and we can like uh, f fix those circuits. A substitute for those circuits. The implications really are incredible here. Most of what people suffer from in life, apart from physical injury, is stuff going wrong in here. And if you can get down to the level of the neurons, which is what we're talking about here, and communicate directly with neurons, you can literally repair the damaged circuits, as the analogy was made by Elon Musk. You know, we got a shot at probably putting it in, in, in a person in you know, a, a, within a, a year. I think that that's, a, that's, what, that's exactly what I mean. I think we have a chance of putting in, put in someone and having them, having them be healthy and, and restoring some functionality that they've, they've lost. The fear is that eventually you're going to have to cut the whole top of someone's head off and put a new top sure. with a whole bunch of wires if you want to get, you know, the real turbocharged version, the P100D <laughs> of... of brain stimulation I mean ultimately if you if you want to go with full AI symbiosis you'll probably want to do something like that symbiosis is a scary word when it comes to AI it's optional <laughs> <laughs> 
I always find this subject quite interesting. I've been reading books about the future and the fact that we're going to in time merge with our AI, with our computers, with our technology and become some new sort of life form. So for me, this is an obvious natural progression. It's just inevitable and it has been for many years of my life. So sometimes I forget how easy it is to encounter this idea for the first time and like freak out or just not even like what but this is where things are going over time. Of course, again, it's going to be optional, but I don't think there will ultimately be too many Luddites who don't want to coexist with AI rather than be separate from it. Of course, some people may choose that, but I mean, how many of you would like to go back in time 2000 years? Now, not the romantic time. I mean, the actual, what it was really like, you know, die at 20 or 30 years old, extremely high chance of being murdered by somebody, beliefs that were causing people to make absurd decisions and inflict violence upon others for like, there's a million different things, right? Your food choices, your health, medicine, all this stuff, entertainment, romantic choices. I think most of us would agree today is a good time to be alive. In the future, I think that the benefits that come from merging with AI AI, having this sort of symbiosis, I think most people will want to go down that path. Not everyone, but the vast majority. So guys, get used to the concept if you're squirming around in your seat. It's going to happen in your lifetime. You literally could fundamentally change the way human yeah. beings interface with each other. Yes. Yes. You wouldn't need to talk. <laughs> Elon effectively here is describing a form of telepathy enabled by Neuralink where people can interface directly with each other's mind and communicate ideas and concepts without needing to dilute them into language first. AI is getting better and better. Um, so now let's assume it's sort of like a, a benign AI scenario. Uh, even in a benign scenario, we're kind of left behind. You know, we're, 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 not, we're not along for the ride. Um, we're just too dumb. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so how do you go along for the ride? Um, yeah, it's like if you can't beat them, join them. So, um, and we're, we're already we're already a cyborg to some degree, right? Because you've got your phone, you've got your laptop, glasses. Your, yeah, yeah, you could draw, yeah. you know, sure. electronic devices. Yeah. Um, and um, I mean, we're, today, if you, your, your phone, if you if you don't bring your phone along, it's like you have missing limb syndrome. It's like you know, feels like something's really really missing. So, we're already partly. Um, part, you know, partly a cyborg um, or an AI symbiote, essentially. Um, it's just that the data rate to the electronics is slow. So, especially output, like you're just going with your thumbs. I mean, like, what, what's your data rate? Maybe optimistically, 100 bits per second. That's being generous. Um, and, and now the computer can, can communicate at like you know, 100, 100 terabits, you know, so, so certainly, you know, gigabits are trivial at this point. So this, this is like, you know, basically your, comp your computer could do, a, a mil do things a million times faster. Or, or you're, you're, at a certain point, it's like talk, the AI is like talking to a tree. Okay, this is boring. <laughs> you talk to a tree. It's very, not very entertaining. So if you can, if you can solve the the data rate issue and your especially output but input too, then you can improve the symbiosis that is already occurring between man and machine. You'll be able to interface with each other in some sort of a non-verbal, mm -hmm. non-physical way, where you will transfer data back and forth to each other without having to actually use your mouth. Yeah, and make noises. Exactly. So when you like what happens when you when like let's say you've got some complex idea that you're trying to convey to somebody else, and how how do you do that? Well, your your brain spends a lot of effort compressing a, a complex concept into words, and there's a there's a lot of a lot of loss information loss that occurs when compressing a complex concept into words, and then you say those words, those words are then interpreted, then they're decompressed by the person who is listening. Um, and they, they will at best get a, a, a very incomplete understanding of what you're trying to convey. It's very difficult to convey a complex concept with precision um, because you've got compression, decompression. You may not even have heard all the words correctly. And so communication is difficult. You know, what we have here is a failure to communicate. <laughs> 
I'm sure nobody watching has ever been misunderstood when they've said anything or struggled to convey their meaning, right? It happens all the time. Just think about what's going to change when we can bypass having to render down and scale down and compress and extract what we think is the meaning and try to somehow take this concept and turn it into language, which is a totally different medium, right? Just to deliver it to the other person who then has to sort of try and decipher and then assign their own meaning, right? Imagine if we can just take the meaning part, actually what we're trying to convey and directly communicate that with other people. Holy shit. Might be the last time we ever see a fight on Twitter. Might be the last time we ever see people argue, ever. Yeah, I think you would, in principle, you would be able to communicate uh, very quickly and with far more precision uh, ideas. Uh, and, and language would, I'm not sure what would happen to language. But you could probably, in a situation like this, that you would be able to just, it would be kind of like the Matrix. You, you want to speak a different language, no problem. Right. Let's wire it, we'll just download the program. How many years before you don't have to talk? If the, if, if the development continues to accelerate, then maybe like five years, five to ten years. That's quick. That's really quick. That's, that's not, the best case scenario. No talking anymore in five years. Best case scenario. <laughs> but man, ten, 10 years more like it. But also save state. And save state? Save state. Like save your brain state. Like like a save game in a video game. Whoa. <laughs> like like if you want to swap from Windows 95. Well, to, hope, like yeah. you... <laughs> hopefully a little better than... <laughs> that but yeah i think we are windows 95 right now yeah. from, from a future perspective probably um yeah. but yeah i mean you you could uh save state um and restore that state into a biological being if you if you wanted to in the future in principle there's like nothing like from a physics standpoint that prevents us now you, you'd be a little different but then you're also a little different when you wake up in the morning from yesterday and you're a little different in fact if you say like you five years ago versus you today it's quite a big difference yes um so you'd be substantially you. I mean, you'd be you, you'd certainly think you're you. But the idea of saving yourself and then transforming that into some sort of a biological state, like you could hang out with 30-year-old you? I mean, the possibilities are endless. Um, <laughs> That's so weird. I, I mean, just think, think of like how your phone can – you can record videos on your phone. Mm -hmm. Like there's no, no way you could remember a video. Right. As accurately as your phone or a camera, you know, could. So, uh, you know, if, you, if you've got like a, you know, some some, you know, version ten Neuralink or whatever, and far in the future, you you could re you could rem you could re recall everything, but just like it's a movie, Crystal all, clear. It, it, including all the entire sensory experience, emotions, everything, 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 everything and play it back. And Do you, you think and, and you'll in be fact, able to you share? Edit it. Edit it. Yeah. So you can change your past? You could change what you think was your past, yeah. Well, so if you had like this, a traumatic This whole thing experience. right now could be a replayed memory. This is the very reason the term mind-blowing exists, right? Like, guys, holy crap, the future is here. Now, if this is news to you, if you're not somebody who's been following neuroscience and the progress of modern medicine and technology and how these are all intersecting together, some of this stuff may sound absolutely ridiculous. Believe me, it is not. The science is there. We have a very clear path to make this stuff happen. Hope you guys have found this insightful. Of course, if you want to watch the full interview, and you should, it's amazing, check it out. There's a link in the description. Joe and Elon spent about two hours, probably half of that time, talking about Neuralink and AI and then some other topics as well. Well, I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. This channel has kind of blown up since it launched, and I'm working on making the best possible content for you guys, but it takes time. Consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can continue creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. And you can now also become a member of the channel to get some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.